Another pediatric case, seven-year-old boy with seizures, you are shown an axial T2 weighted image on the left, uh, on the center a postgatolinium image, and on the far right a cerebral uh, blood uh, volume study from the MRI perfusion study. Give you a couple of seconds to look through the case. And let's go on to the first question. The most likely diagnosis is E, abscess, B, a metastasis, D, a desmoplastic infantile ganglioglioma, and I had to write it down there so I could remember what that stands for. Uh, D is a disembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor, and E, a malignant astrocytoma. Start a countdown, please. Okay, and let's see the answer. And the majority of you guys say a malignant astrocytoma or a DNET. Not a DNET, but a malignant astrocytoma is the correct answer. Well, let's look at the differential diagnosis offered in this slide. An abscess, a thin rim of enhancement, uh, generally uh, not nodular. They can be abutting the ventricles, like seen in this case, high signal intensity on the diffusion weighted image, and the very low ADC on the apparent diffusion coefficient map. Metastasis is extremely uncommon to the brain in children. They generally go to the bones. A DIG is a large cystic mass with a mural nodule that enhances. The mural nodule may have dural tails, like in this case, and they may be spread uh, in the peel space of the tumor. Uh, I saw one case this year in which the tumor had spread entirely throughout the peel space. And a DNET, which is what many of you consider is generally a small cortical tumor, patients with chronic seizures, it tends to have an overlying cortical dysplasia. This may remodel the bone, and the underlying abnormality is generally uh, is said to have a microcystic appearance, although in this case it does not. Okay, let's go on to the next question. The following are MRS, spectroscopic features of a malignant astrocytoma. A, low n aspartate. B, high choline. C, low myoinositol. D, the presence of lipids and lactate, and E, all of the above. Oh, no, another one of those questions. Going to give you only five seconds. <laughs> okay. And hopefully all of you answer. Let's see. Oh, very good. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the spectra of a low-grade glioma done with a uh, long echo time. You see uh, some elevation of the calling, about a 2 to 1 with the creatine and preservation of the n aspartate. And in malignant glioma, highly elevated calling at least, at least a 10 to 1 in this with respect to the creatine. Your n aspartate has almost completely disappeared, and you started to get an inverted peak here, about 1.3 parts per second, probably due to lactate and ischemia, signifying that there's also neovascularity. Let's take a look at some data from an article that came five years ago. It is an interesting article because they took almost 11,000 tumors and they reclassified them according to the new WHO scheme. And these are the things that I like about this article. Tumors in children occur equally in both genders. We tend to think uh, uh, by traditional teaching that they are more common in uh, males, but they're not. They're common in, uh, equally common in both genders. We also tend to think that tumors in children are much more common in the infratentorial compartment than in the supratentorial compartment, but in this large series, 54% of them occur supratentorially, and of those that occur in the cerebral hemispheres, about half of them were low grade, and curiously, about half of them were high grade. We tend to think that most tumors in children are low grade. And of those that were high grade, 15% of them were highly malignant gliomas, and GVM was actually the most common malignant supratentorial childhood tumor in this series, so remember that. That's an important thing, and in this case, the diagnosis was a glioblastoma 